How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Maniac Cop. This is from 1988 and looking at the credits quite a few really cool uh, people that uh, if you're fans of cult horror uh, you'll recognize quite a few of these names. This is directed by William Lustig. It stars Tom Adkins Bruce Campbell, uh, Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Landon, and, as the maniac cop himself, Robert Zadar. Uh, this movie was also written and produced by Larry Cohen. And I believe the story went something like this. William Lustig made the movie Maniac, and Larry Cohen saw the movie. It was about a maniac in New York, and Cohen had an idea, what if we did a semi-spin-off of that movie where there was another maniac in New York, but this time he was a cop. He had a bit of power behind him. So it's sort of a spin-off, but not really. If you haven't seen Maniac, it's okay. Uh, but, but Maniac is pretty good. You should probably watch Maniac just, just to watch Maniac. But you don't have to see it for this. Although that being said... Maniac, Maniac Cop, Scanners, Scanner Cop. Are there any other franchises that went the cop route? Kind of an interesting idea. Uh, but anyway, they did this movie, and it's very different from Maniac. And it's a slasher movie, but it's also different from a lot of slashers. There's a bit more mystery, which is kind of an early slasher thing, especially like Giallo mysteries with the police and stuff. But there's also a bit more action in this movie. What you know, slasher movies, you get kill sequences. You don't usually get car chases. And also, Maniac Cop, he's a pretty cool, big, scary dude. And it's a really cool, kind of underrated slasher character. You did get a trilogy of movies after this, Maniac Cop 2 and 3 came out. And I remember those both being pretty good, but not as good as the first. But still, an underrated slasher, and I definitely would recommend it. But in addition to being an entertaining slasher with car chases and mystery, it does have the social element there. This is Larry Cohen. Larry Cohen likes to take fun B-movies and put something in them that ha makes him a a little bit more relevant, you know? Like, take The Stuff. The Stuff was a fun creature feature movie that also said something about consumerism. Q, The Winged Serpent, a giant monster movie, but in giant monster movies, the little people on the ground just get stepped on. And the Q, The Winged Serpent was about a little guy that often got stepped on, taking his chance to become big good there, right? And Maniac Cop does this as well. Maniac Cop is about broken trust. It's about going, people should be able to trust the police. What if they can't? Do we even tell people that someone dressed up as a cop is killing people? Or would that be too dangerous and damaging? And then when it gets out, the story is told from the perspective of good cops, what is it like to be an honest cop in the city when everyone is scared of you? It's really interesting concepts that do have a lot of real-world application. And in fact, I wanted to cover this movie a few years ago, but sadly, there were real-world events, and I felt that it was way too sore of a subject. Uh, so I had to, to delay it and... and Hopefully things will stay calmed down for a while, but I do want to say that this movie does talk about very sensitive issues in, in an intelligent way and leaves you a lot with a lot to ponder and think about. And yeah, broken trust is a very important thing to talk about, and this movie does it really well. A lot better than modern movies do, so I am super glad that they never remade it. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the plot. In order to analyze this movie a bit more, 
I'll be avoiding the end, so I'll try to avoid major spoilers, but let's take a moment to break things down and, and look at a little bit of primarily the setup. Anyway, we open up with a series of killings. People around New York are being killed, and they say, witnesses, that a cop did it. But of course, the police are hesitant to believe that a cop would just kill someone, and they're getting more and more reports, and it's getting harder and harder to deny. I do want to say that brings in a Tom Atkins character, and Tom Atkins is really, really good in this movie. Tom Atkins sees someone dead. It's this girl he knew, and he's going, this is sad, but I have to analyze it. And the other guy's, like, throwing up, and... It shows you that, you know, it's this hard line of, I have to be stern, but I do have a heart. You know, he does know that it's someone he knew, but he's not throwing up like the other guy. It's affecting him, but he's still investigating. Tom Atkins is really good in this movie. He's the cop that won't be fooled. And yeah, the killings start super early. That is one thing is a lot of slasher movies don't have the kills until later. Because once people start dying, people start noticing, and the movie starts burning way too fast. But when you're doing a murder mystery, then the part of the plot is that people know about the kills, so the kills start early. And there's some pretty good, gruesome New York kills. Maniac Cop pushes a guy into wet cement and suffocates him there. That's a good New York kill. And Maniac Cop is scary. He's big and strong, and he can pick someone up and just snap their neck in his hands because he's he's Maniac Cop. He has a baton, and he pulls the baton, and it's secretly a knife, you know, kind of like a sword cane, but a sword baton. Yeah, Maniac Cop is a scary dude. Uh, but anyway, Tom Atkins makes the decision to leak this to the papers. His bosses don't want it to get out. They say if someone dressed as a cop is killing someone, let's keep this on the lowdown until someone until we find him. But he says it's too dangerous. People could go up to a cop expecting safety and then get killed. Well, after he leaks the story, you get a woman getting pulled over by the police and she shoots the officer because she's afraid it's the maniac cop. And we do get this whole thing. Did Tom Atkins make the right decision leaking the story? Because, yeah, Maniac Cop might have a harder time killing people now, but now the trust with the police system is broken and everyone's scared of cops and the city's in a panic. I really do like those moral decisions where there's no clear right or wrong answer. I don't know. Maybe Tom Atkins did the right thing. And maybe he didn't. And that is really good for the the ambiguity there. Uh, but then we get Bruce Campbell's character. Bruce Campbell is a cop who's having an affair with his wife. And right after the affair is discovered, Maniac Cop kills his wife and sets him up to take the fall. Maniac Cop is smarter. He's not just a big hulking whore villain. He can figure out how to frame you because he has those cop instincts. So Bruce Campbell is taking the fall. Of course, if Robert Zadar is going to frame anybody, he needs someone else with a distinguishable chin, right? Uh, so Bruce Campbell is arrested, but uh, Tom Adkins doesn't believe it. He figures out who he was seeing, which could be an alibi if the police would trust her, and who he's seeing is also a cop. So you get these two out of prison trying to solve the case, and there is a bit more of a mystery here, going back and figuring out an old case of police corruption and getting this interesting backstory. And plus, Tom Atkins is a detective. He gets to do some detecting. And the idea that it's old-timey police corruption tied into what's going on now does tie it thematically together. And I won't say who the Maniac Cop is, I don't think it's really a spoiler, 
But just to say how much of an impact this is, is I do remember from the very first time I watched this movie up until the rewatch for this review, what Maniac Cop's real name is. And I feel like, you know, a lot of other slashers, you know, you remember them and you remember what they're called, but you don't always remember the killer's real name. But I do for Maniac Cop, I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, so you have that, and they're trying to, of course, get Bruce Campbell out. And I think one thing with this movie, you know, there, there's not really a ton of flaws, but I remember that Bruce Campbell said that this is one of his least favorite movies that he's done. And I don't think it's a bad movie by any means. Maniac Cop is a really good movie, and I think Bruce is good in it. But at the same time, I can see why he might not like this movie. Bruce Campbell usually does a lot more humor in this, and here he's playing it relatively serious, so you don't get a ton of good, quirky Bruce Campbell moments. I kind of wish you got that. And also, Bruce Campbell being the prime suspect does mean he's locked up for a good portion of this movie, and I kind of wish Bruce Campbell was more out there and running around, so... Yeah, Bruce isn't bad in this movie, but we could have had a more standard big Bruce Campbell movie and we didn't. But hey, a little less Bruce Campbell, at least we got Tom Atkins and Robert Zadar in there. We still got the cult actors that we love, right? Uh, but anyway, it does heat up. Like I said, there's a ton of slasher kills in this movie, and a really good sequence at the police station with actually a pretty high body count, but there's also a little bit more action than we normally get in slasher movies. There's actually a car chase with this big van that Maniac Cop steals towards the end, and yeah, it's a car chase in a slasher movie. That's pretty rare, so there is a little bit more action. So that's, that's what I really like with this horror movie, is it fires on all cylinders, you know? There's slasher kills, there's action, but behind all this stuff, there is an important message. There's also a mystery, and a ton of good uh, people that cult horror fans know. You know, cult horror fans know Lustig, they know Larry Cohen, you got Atkins, Campbell, and Zadar in here. It's a really fun mashup with a lot of cool people, and overall, I definitely would recommend this movie. And if you like it, check out Larry Cohen's other films, because Larry Cohen, as a writer, director, and producer, has put out some really good stuff, and I definitely would recommend check out, you know, It's Alive, The Stuff, Cue the Winged Serpent, some pretty cool things that he's done. And, and check out the original Maniac, too, that's pretty fun. Anyway... To everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my slasher movies playlist. If you guys want to see me talk about more slasher movies, I think there's over a hundred videos in here, so there's quite a bit. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.